In order to use Drizzle relational queries, we'll have to do a bit of setup first. So we'll have to pass the schema into our Drizzle instance. All right, so first I will import star as schema from schema. And then I'll pass an object here with the schema. And this is just a shorthand for this. So we can leave this part out. All right, so let's create a script to test this out. I'll create a new file. We'll call this read todos. And I'll just suffix that with ORM to let us know that we're using the relational queries. And then here, I will do an await and then db dot query dot to do. So now we have this on the query object and then I can do a find many and then let's log out the to do's. And then in the terminal, I will run that script And we have our to-dos using the relational syntax. Let's try getting one to-do. And let's run the script again. Okay, so there is our single to-do. All right, let's test out some of the relational querying capabilities of Drizzle. Uh, so let's set up a one-to-many relationship. And so we'll do something similar to this example here. Uh, so a user will have many to-dos. I'm back in the schema file here, so let's start by creating a user table. And then let's generate a migration. All right, so it generated this file. Let's have a look at that. And then, so this will create a user table for us. So let's go ahead and run this migration. So this is one of the dangers of messing around with the migration files. Uh, we had deleted one of them earlier, so we're going to have to go and make some changes to our meta. So as you can see, uh, we have, well, I think we can maybe leave these snapshots in, but if you look at the journal, you'll see that it has a record of this migration, right? So Maybe what we can do is to delete this record, and uh, this is not recommended, you know, in a production application. But since this is like just the beginning, when we're prototyping this app for the first time, it's probably still okay to do something like this. Um, but so let me go ahead and delete that, and uh, let's try to run the migration again to see if it runs this time. Okay, so it looks like it succeeded this time. So let's confirm that everything ran correctly in the Neon console. I'll refresh this. And you can see that we have a user table now. 
with an ID and name. And then if we go to our drizzle schema and go to this table, you'll see that there are now two entries in this table. So let's set up the relations between these two tables. So we finished our setup of our one-to-many relationship, but I just want to point out one important detail. So relations work even without the foreign key setup. So you can see that they can be used together, but they are not dependent on each other. And you can define relations without using foreign keys and vice versa. So this allows them to be used with databases that do not support foreign keys. And so here's an example. Um, they say that these two examples will work exactly the same in terms of querying the data using Drizzle relational queries. So here we have a schema where there is no references. And then with this schema, there is a references. OK, let's create a script to create our first user. So I'll create a file, create user. And let's run the script. There's our first user. Let's create a, another script to assign to do's to that one user. Let's add a limit. Let's just assign the first 10. Okay, and then let's run an update. Or actually, let's, uh, let's just loop through these to-dos. And then run an update on each one. I think that because there's a conf conflict in the name, uh, let's just name this T instead. And then now I can import this so that there isn't a naming conflict there. And we're going to set the user ID uh, to, well, we know that there's only one user, so it's going to be one. And we'll need a where clause. So where the to do dot ID is equal to to t dot ID. All right, so let's run the script.
Oh, that's because we did not migrate yet. So let's run the migrate. So we can add our user ID column to the to do table. Okay, so let's run this again. Oh, I think it's because we set up the users relation, but we forgot to set up the to do's relation. So let's go ahead and do that now. So with this relation, our to do dot user ID now references the user dot ID, uh, which is this. Okay, let's try running the script again. My mistake, it looks like I didn't even run the generate command. So let's do that. Okay, and let's just take a look at that. And now we're adding user ID to the to-do. Okay, so now let's run the migration. And then go to Neon and refresh. And now we have user ID. Okay, let's try running the script one more time. And it looks like it ran successfully. Let's confirm by running our read user script. Okay, so we have these 10 here that are uh, user ID one. Okay, let's create a script to read the users. So I'll create a script here, read users. And let's run this. So await db dot query. And let's run the script. Okay. So we got the users, but how do we include the to do's in this response here? We can use the with operator. So I'll add a configuration object. And then with, and then to do's, true. Okay, let's go back to the terminal and run the script again. All right, so we can see that this response now includes the to do's. So how can we actually see these to-dos here? Well, I went ahead and added this code here. So I imported util, and then we do a util.inspect, and then we pass in this object. So let's see if this works. All 
Okay, there we go. However, we lost our colors, so I think we can add the colors back in if we just add another option here for colors. All right, perfect. So we were able to query a list of users with its to-dos, but how can we do something similar using the SQL-like query builder? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So first, let's create a new file, and we'll call this read users join. And then I will, uh, so actually let's just call this result, and then we'll await, and I want to select from user, and I want to do a left join because uh, we want to grab the user regardless of whether they have to do's or not. If we wanted to only get the users that had some to do's, then we could use an inner join. But since we want all the users, regardless of their to do's, we'll use a left join. And we'll do a left join on the to do table where the to do dot user ID is equal to user dot ID. Okay. And let's log out this result. And let's try running the script. All right. So let's compare this to the relational query. So as you can see, we have this sort of nested structure where the to-dos are part of the user object, as opposed to this, where we have this object with a user and a to-do property. So I find that if you're building out UIs, uh, and if you're building out like a data table, this one's a bit easier to work with. But if you have some type of tree structure, then maybe this one would be easier to work with. All right, so that concludes the relational part of this course.